Okay, I'll make these sites available to you on the internet and you'll be able to get them. Um, you can get them off my website. I'll give Joanne the link to my website and I'll put this talk on the website uh, and you'll get it. And I put that site there because it gives you a bit more detail about things. So, uh, remembering, recalling information, but up here with the creative one, the creating, generating new ideas, products, or ways of viewing things, generating new stuff. That's where we want our students, up there. Okay? And that, that's really important. That's, that's, that's what we're aiming at. And it's complicated. That, that side there is to show you that all these things interact. The remembering, the understanding, analyzing, applying, evaluating, and creating, they all kind of go together. We're not saying that you don't have to do some remembering, you do. But you've got to, you're doing it for this. You're not doing it just for the sake of remembering. Now we come to the last one, desks. The harm done by desks. Well, desks say who is in control. They're teacher-centered. So if I get up here, I am in control. You stand up, please. You sit down. All right? No talking. Get off your cell phone. All right? I'm in control. I see you all. I'm very bad. It gives the whole wrong impression. If we want creative students, we're not going to get it by having somebody up here like this pushing out of them. That's not going to happen. Okay. So they say who's in control. They limit the forms of motivation. We won't go back into that. And the levels of students' experience. Now, look at that room. Where's the most important person? Where do they go? Where does the most important person go in that room? There? There maybe? There are pretty important. And also the guy over here. Right? And these guys, well, they're not so important. All right? You can tell. You can see just the way the room's set out. All right? That's a, in New Zealand. That's a conference room in Wellington, New Zealand. You can just tell by the way it's set out. It's got this particular approach to things. You've seen these guys. Right? This is one of my classes a couple of semesters ago. Not a very good photo. I'm not a great photographer. But there they are, doing their work at their desks, da 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 Well, that was just like the room I showed you, wasn't it? See all those desks? Now look at them. There's the same students. Can you see what we've done? We've, we've made it a circle. And they now sit around, and I ask them to use their phone to take these pictures. So we all sit equal. And the classes, the classes can be quite big. But then I say to them, right, we'll start with you first, and you've got to stand up, and you've got to ask them a question, and off they go, and then the next one, and then the next one, and so on. And then to start to get them to discuss things, because you've got to remember this is an English show, it's quite hard for them. So try and get them to discuss things. I might have this one makes, says something, and this one over here, she's got the task of replying to this one. So when the first one speaks, the one that's got to reply, she's watching very carefully, okay? And you, what, what I'm doing is that I'm getting them used to asking questions, right? Asking questions and making comments on what people have said. Now you can do this with quite little children. There we all are. There's a big heap of us, okay? Now, we, we call that the tutorial structure. And what did I have to do to do that? Well, I said to them all, OK, stand up. They all stood up. Pick up your desk. Pick up the desk. What do you mean? Nobody said pick up the desk before. Pick up your desk. Take your desk over there to the side of the room. Put your desk down. Take your chair. Bring it back. Put your chair in a circle. Right? Change the room around. Change the room around. You've got to change the room around. Okay? They get a fright. Well, my students got a fright. But now I just say to them, tutorial, and go like that, and they all do it. So they're good. It's quick, quick. Get to the end of the session, they put it all back. Okay? Now, look at that one. What can we learn about that?
these guys, they're working with the teacher there, aren't they? All right? Now, they might all be at the same sort of ability level. These might be all the slow ones, or they might be all the good ones, or something. These ones over here, doing their own thing. There's another little group over there, they're doing something else. Some here working, looks as if they might be working by themselves, those ones. Can you see how now in that classroom, these kids are doing things more appropriate to them? If those are the slower ones, then they're getting special help from this teacher, aren't they? Whereas the brighter ones might be down there, doing their own thing and they're working together, and, and that drags them in. So that's the sort of classroom where you've used the desks to try and get a new approach to your teaching. Here's another one with slightly older students. These guys all seem to be playing on their phones, actually. Right? But you can see the idea, can't you? You can see how the teacher's taken the desks and shoved them together and put them into a group so that they've got a task that they've got to do. Now, we see them playing on their phones, but they may actually be looking up information on the internet, for all we know. We don't know. They could just be playing on their phones. But they're in a little work group, learning to work together, trying to solve some sort of problem. They've got some kind of research problem that they're working on. There it is with a bigger group, the same sort of thing. Right? Looking at the uniforms, this looks like a private school. So, there they are, they're all there, they're, they're working together in groups. So this group might be doing one project, this group could be doing a different project. So if you do that, this group might do this project for a couple of weeks, and then after two weeks, the other group does this, that project and they swap over. There's all sorts of ways that you can do that. Now, if you're stuck, if you... <laughs> To get to that, you've got to be prepared to shift the desks. Alright? You've got to shift the desks. That's your, that's your task. I'll know you're making progress if you start shifting desks. Alright? Another thing that's similar is taking your students outside. I don't see that very much here, maybe because it's too hot. But if you can take your students outside and sit them under a big tree and sit them around in a circle, find somewhere in the school where you can take them where it's cool sit outside and work with them. Just just changes things a little bit for them. Okay. Pedagogy for motivation. Be a creative thinker yourself. I've said this about four times to you now. Be creative yourself. A lot of people tell them, ask me the question, how do I teach English? And the answer is, for goodness sake, don't teach English. Don't teach English. It's a terrible thing to teach. English is a language that is used for something. Right? Teach for something, but do it in English. Teach the as, as we're doing now. I mean, we're talking about education, but you're learning English at the same time, aren't you? Right? So you're not kind of worried about the English so much. You know what to do. If you don't know a word, you look it up on your phone. All right? So you've got that side of it. Don't teach English, for goodness sake. Set up the conditions for thinking and encourage the students to work in English. All right? I tell you, and I don't know where they put it in here. I tell you something that's really quite fun. Get your students to go and teach some English to an elderly person. To an elderly person. The older people love it. Right? The students now have to think, oh goodness, I've got to teach this English stuff, I really have to know what I'm saying here or I'll look stupid. So they've got good motivation. And then when they've done that, you can get the elderly person to write something in Chinese about it. Or in some cases, you can even get them to come to the school and talk about it and say, look, this person taught me. Right? So that there's more interaction but you've got to be prepared to experiment with these sorts of things so if you can get people to teach other people okay, quite little ch children can do this and base your projects base the projects that the students do on their interests so students have particular interests they are all interested in food or 90 percent of them are so a lot of 
and pits and things, all that sort of stuff. They, they all like all that when they're little. And, and so those are things. But that may not be their interests. You've got to find out what their interests are, and you've got to base it on that. Computer games are quite big. Cell phone games are quite big. But if all the boys like playing a particular cell phone game, say, right, we're going to talk about it in English, and we're going to work out things about it in English. So you've got to base your work on, on their interests. Personal glossaries, the idea of a personal glossary is a word list. Keeping a personal word list. Every time you come across a word you don't know or understand, just jot it down and then find it used somewhere. That's very powerful for teaching. Not for little kiddies, but for the older ones. And again, we come back to this thing. Reward, reward, reward. Good work. Keep it up. Here's a stamp that you could use. Okay, so finally. The worst way to teach anybody is the way I'm using today. This is the worst possible way to teach anybody anything is to lecture, right? Average student retention, in other words, how much do people remember? Lecture, you're not going to go away from here and remember very much. That is the sad, miserable fact. Doesn't matter how good I am in my presentation, you're not going to remember very much. That's why I'm going to put these slides on the internet. That's why these slides have got things in them that you can follow up on, that you can do a bit of research on if you're interested. Okay? So you've got those to start you off. But you're not going to learn much from my talking to you today. You really aren't. You just get a sort of brief overview. Reading is not that good either, actually. People love reading, but they don't actually learn as much from it as you might hope. All right? But right down here, Teaching others is a really good way to learn something yourself. If you teach other people. So in actual fact, in your classroom, who learns the most? In your classroom? You do. You learn the most, not those students. You do in your classroom because you're doing the teaching. You're the guy that does the learning. It's not what China had in mind. It's not what the Ministry of Education had in mind. But it's what happens. You learn. So if you've got a hobby and you want to learn about it, good thing, teach the kids. Teach, teach your hobby. Works really well. That's how I learned Morse code. I was a science teacher. Okay? I was a secondary school science teacher for quite a while. And I, I wanted to learn Morse code. So I thought, oh, I'm going to teach all these kids Morse code. So I taught them all Morse code. We had to make these little machines for Morse code. That's how I learned Morse code. It worked really well. But you need to look at things like that. You try and build on their interests and your interests, okay? So, teaching others is good. Practice doing, like the kids climbing the, the mountain. That, that, that's quite good. Discussions work quite well. You would have learned more today from the discussion part than anything else, and then the other things. But lectures are pretty awful, actually. Thank you. And I'll take your questions. very good, I think. Uh, I want to ask one question. Uh, you just said that examination is not very good for the students, right? Yeah. So, in the future, uh, our English examination will not stop, a few stop, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes? Oh, it's very good. So, <laughs> um, uh, is our government invite you can to come here yes. to make a speech? Yes. yes. Oh, so uh, do you have been to the other town to and yeah, to Not make so a speech? No. No. Only, only, only our town. Uh, I've only been here three years. So I'm, well, I've been here two years, and I'm going to be here another year. Oh. Yeah. I haven't been here very long. So, 
I, I, I want to ask, do you have been to the other town in Dongguan City? No. To make the beach? No. no. Only our town. Are you? Yeah, so. <laughs> I give these sorts of talks to quite a few groups in my university. Oh. In my university. Yeah. I hope the English examination will stop <laughs> in the future. About the IELTS examination. This is a good yes. thing. This is a good news for our English teachers. <laughs> Thank you. Then, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. That there's a big problem. That because it's been captured by people who do tests. And all the students have to pay a lot of money to sit the test, right? They've got to pay money to sit the test, and then they get a grade in the test, and then they don't like the grade that they get, so what do they do? They want to sit it again. Guess what? They have to pay more money, right? There are people that are making a lot of money out of English tests. A lot of money out of English tests. Thank you. There are people who are making a heap of money out of English tests. There's a whole industry that is built up around English tests. And I am not convinced that the tests are very good, actually, because I know people who can speak English. I'm talking about Chinese people who can speak English. And they haven't done the tests at all. Or if they have, they get low marks in the test, but their English with me is fine. Fine. And I also know people who've done really well in the test, got a high mark, and when I talk to them, they can't understand. So I'm suspicious of the test, and I hope you are too. Be suspicious of the test, all right? But at the moment, it's all locked into a commercial System. It's all to do with, to do with the, 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 the business of testing. And we're going to have to get away from that. We're going to make some progress in terms of education. Right? It's a good, good that so many students want to learn English. It's great. But they've got to do it in the right sort of way. They've got to do it in the right sort of way. And they've got to be able to use it. And by, by far, the best sorts of things that you can do is to have periods in your classroom where you're only going to speak English for a while. All right? But don't make that the focus. Say we are going to do something, something you're going to do that the children like. It might be playing badminton or something like that, playing some sort of physical game, and you say, right, we're playing this game, now you're going to just talk English. No Chinese, just English while we play the game. All right, we're going to play the game. Don't forget it's... And then you watch, you see, you get out of it, leave them playing the game. And if somebody comes out and says something in Chinese, you just go, and they know, they know. And then they start talking English. And then after they play the game, you say, well, how would you think of the game? And then you can check off the words that they used and say, look, these were the words that you were using. Good, good, good. Hey, I'll give you another couple of words. You might like this word and that word. I had a boy that... Uh, was in my little class on Thursday night that I told you about. And I, I asked him, I said to him, what did you do in the weekend? And the, somehow or other the answer had, had to do with tennis. He played tennis. And I said to him, oh, okay. Well, how do you score in tennis? And he thought about it for a moment. He said, in English, 15, 30, 40, right? And, 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 and love, love means zero in tennis. I said to him, why does love mean zero in tennis? He didn't know. I said, I don't know either. But, uh, uh, yeah, and juice. And he said, oh, we don't say juice in China. I said, oh, what do you say? He said, oh, we say 40-40. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> so can you see how that was a little English language lesson that I was giving him? But he thought it was about tennis. He was telling me about his tennis. And we talked more about tennis. So you're trying to, you're trying to use the English. This is what they mean when they say a context. You're trying to use the English, but you're not, um, you're not kind of putting it up the front. You want to say some more? Somebody else? Okay. One, two. Yes, you're there. Actually, English 
，就是说以后的英语考试就是社会化，就好像的考托福、托福、考雅思这样子，就是水平测试。但是他那个以后的高考生，他要考一个好的学校的话，那么他的英语，他对英语这一块的话呢，他会提高那个呃要求。也就是说，那个虽然说英语可能以后就会停止，就类似我们高考这样的那个呃分数，但是的话，并不代表学生们不需要学，也并不代表以后他不需要考试，只是说，如果如你要呃取得某一个 level， 就是说你比如说你要毕业的话，你要 A 的 level， 你必须要达到什么什么什么什么样的水平才能毕业。毕业的基础上，你要考一个好学校的话，那么你的这个英语水平要达到每一个比较高水平的一一个呃呃呃 level 才可以达到那个学校去。就说他的那高考的改革方向都是这样子，不单单是英语会改革，其他学科它也会改革，逐渐的将这个考试推向一年多考，不是以考定终身。然后的话呢，它也可能是变变成一个水平的测试。不是一百分制或者是一百五分，五十分制这样进行一个测测试，这是我想补充一点的啊。你们可以多了解一下教育部这些关于英语考试改革的一些呃文章，还有一些那个专家们的一些那个呃他们写的一些材料，就是说我们可以看出我们英语英语教学的方向也是有点改变了，对不对？啊 ，Any more questions？ 呃，那就是刚刚他说的英语高考。其实我自己本身也有留意，但是有个问题就是说，他不是说社会化吗？但是有个问题是说，谁在背后说是支持这个社会化？好像雅思的话，它通常是那个 British Council 来弄的，还有再加其他那些利益集团就比较大的集团。那我们中国的高考是谁？是中国政府吗？还是说他要给某一个利益集团，他让他来负责，还是说什么？因为我们好像雅思的话，考试的话，还有一个问题对学生，就是说像我们这样的话。很重要的问题是说费用是多少？好像雅思它上千，但是好像我们考高考或者是考六级的话，因为是政府在背后，所以它费用比较少。但是如果好像是这么多中学生、小学生，他要考一个英语考试，说要考一个好的学校的话，但是我们要付上上千块钱去考一块的话，那普通的工薪家庭他们怎么考？他一个月工资这么少，你考一个试说还要想说考好一点，想考考多一次的话，那一个月就不用吃饭了。就是说，不是要考虑这个问题吗？他是政府在背后支持呢，还是说他要给其他的一些大学或者什么来弄呢？就是我觉得他他在义务教育阶段肯定是免费。也就是说，他也许会。用那些机构来代替那个高考的那个那这样的一个一个组织机构是可能会有点改变，那肯定，但是没有这么快的，它还是逐步逐逐步进行改革的，就好像现在每一个省份对英语最高考的分数都不一样一样，对不对？山东山东它不考口语的，对吗？然后的话，但是其他省份的话，它就逐渐把那个呃听力听力考试。呃，山东是不考听力的，然后他听力考试，其他省份要，就是说大家都是在做一个实验阶段，还没有定出一条比较好的一个能够统一出来的一条路，这样子。他还在，其实我也不知道他在干什么，但是我就说有这个，就说就说他在说要搞改高考的时候，就说要需要考虑这个问题，就是说。呃，谁在背后负责说这个社会化的问题？因为他很多很像，大家都不知道他在搞什么。然后他就说，呃，我们要取消高考这样子。其实对我来说不重要，因为我已经考完高考。然<笑>后说想一个，就是因为好像大家都想说考托福、雅思，其实这是只是一个测试。然后他背后其实都是那些，呃，呃。那个英国政府还有那个呃剑桥大学在呃剑桥大学他这里在背后然后在搞搞搞这个东西，所以他才会这么贵的嘛。然后托福也是。考试话题到这儿。哎<笑>、呃，对，还有其他的问题吗？啊、uh, uh, ，My question is just now three. 
bad things, evils, yes. no textbooks, yes. right? Yes. But for us, as teachers, what can we focus on? What, how, how do we know what we should teach the students? Thank you. That's a really good question. I've said to you about five times, what you're going to teach question with the students, the curriculum, what you teach, that's for you to work out. You are going to have to work it out. Nobody's going to tell you. The Ministry of Education think they're going to tell you. Ministry of Education's always think that. I can tell you, I used to be in the Ministry of Education, so I know quite a bit about Ministries of Education. But you've got to figure out what you're going to teach them. You're going to have to do it. There's no other way. There's no easy way. It's the hard thinking. And you try something, and you build on it, and away you go. But you're going to have to do it, and it's a big step. I'll tell you something else about it, though. When you go to teach your class, when you go in to teach your class, it's just you and the students, really. Nobody else knows what's going on very much. Nobody at all. In, in New Zealand, we say that uh, once you close the door to your classroom, nobody knows what's happening. Nobody. <laughs> it's just a secret between you and the children, right? You don't close the door here because it's so hot. Everybody has the door open. But the same idea holds that you, you've got lots of room to figure out what you're going to teach. And do you remember that very first slide that I showed you? The rights of the teacher in China? And it said you've got the right to experiment. Remember that? The very, very first one I put up there said you've got the right. So the Chinese government has said to you, yes, you've got the right to do it. That's a very good thing. And I said to you that China hasn't got a student problem, it's got a teacher problem. Now this is a part of this teacher problem. The teachers have got to figure out what they're going to teach. Wow. Big responsibility. You've got to figure out what you're going to teach. And I'll tell you something, the government of China will be really pleased if you do it. Because if you do, if you do actually start doing new things, you will make a difference. You will make a difference. You know, the students come through to me in, in the university and there's a lot of, they're, they're not used to doing their own research. They're not used to going on the internet, finding things out, and then writing papers. And I've got to teach them that. Now, they really should be learning that earlier on. They should be learning that in the high school. But we've got to teach them in the university because they haven't had that experience. And probably you haven't either in your, in your, own, in your own education. So you've got this, this big job. Educate yourself, teach, get yourself taught and learn yourself, and, um, and then you decide what you're going to teach them. Good luck, good luck. Have you heard of the MOOCs? Do you know what a MOOC is? A massive open online course? MOOCs are a good thing. MOOCs. Yeah, for free. You can learn what you learn. Have you done a MOOC? Have you done one? Yeah, I tried. Tell, tell, tell them about it in Chinese. Tell, tell, tell them about it in Chinese. Uh, now it's very popular. It's called MOOC. MOOC. Then this class can be used through WeChat or online. Then you can choose anything you want to learn. Then you can learn it for free. 这是一个比较新型的自我增值的一种学习方式大家可以在网上搜索一下查询一下然后尝试一下学习一下慕课慕课 Thank you M-O-O-C It stands for Massive Massive meaning big Open Open Online Internet Course See for course, MOOC, MOOC. And, and MOOCs have the great advantage that they're free. It doesn't cost you anything. And, and they come from major universities and they're, they're, you know, they're really worthwhile. So you can find out stuff and, and learn things from them, which is good. But there are other ways too. Any other questions?
今天我们的讲座到这里啊、哦。Thank you, Rob, and thank you. Tell tell us about know more about the theory of the how to teach child, how to teach the children, how to use English, not teach English. <laughs> okay, now uh, 我们今天的会议到这里这里了啊。那么今天非常感谢大家来参加我们这个论坛，虽然我们没有给机会你们。多谈一点东西，所以的话，呃，下一期论坛是呃，六月下旬是绘本阅读的，但是是针对家长的，所以的话呢，我们这个学期的论坛只要只有三期，啊、呃，顺便跟你们说一下这事儿。好了，啊、呃，如果喜欢跟 Robert 来合照的，你们就来这里来；如果你们呃要回去的，那么就现在可以回去了啊。Thank you。